In this video, we are going to have glaucoma, just an overview. Glaucomas are a group of eye disorders characterized by progressive optic nerve damage in which an important part is a relative increase in intraocular pressure, IOP, that can lead to irreversible loss of vision. Glaucoma is the second most common cause of blindness worldwide and the second most common cause of blindness in the United States where it is the leading cause of blindness for people of African ethnicity and Hispanics. Okay. About 64 million people worldwide and 3 million people in America, because Americans have glaucoma, but only half are aware of it. Glaucoma can occur at any age, but it is six times more common among people over 60 years. So uh, glaucoma can be categorized as follows. There is open angle glaucoma, and angle closure glaucoma, right? So we are going to talk about uh, these two on separate videos, right? So the angle uh, refers to the angle formed by the junction of the iris and the cornea at the periphery of the anterior chamber, right? Uh, look here, right? So uh, if you zoom in here, you are going to have, this is the anterior chamber, this is the posterior chamber, you can see the iris here, and anteriorly here you can see the cornea, right? Uh, and this is the ciliary body, right? And I just want to take this opportunity to explain uh, the uh, the flow of uh, the aqueous humor, right? So you can see here it's, uh, it's produced by the ciliary body, right? And then it passes anteriorly to the anterior chamber, and then uh, through the uh, sclerm canal. Right, and another important thing around this claim canal is this trabecular meshwork. Right, we are going to talk about it as we proceed. Right, the angle is where more than 98% of the aqueous humor exits the eye via either the trabecular meshwork and the claim canal, that's the major pathway, particularly in older people or the ciliary board face and the choroidal vasculature. These outflow pathways are not simply a mechanical filter and the drain, but instead they involve active physiologic processes. Glaucomas are further subdivided into primary, that's the cause of outflow uh, resistance or angle closure is unknown, and secondary, in secondary, the outflow resistance results from a known disorder. Let's talk about the pathophysiology, right? So here you, this is a cross section of the retina, right? So you can see here the choroid. Next here there is um the pigmented layer. This layer is uh, photoreceptors, uh, rods and cones. This layer is uh, bipolar cells, and here you see ganglion cells. Axons of the ganglion cells continues like this as the what? The optic nerve, right? So the axons of retinal ganglion cells travel through the optic nerve carrying visual information from the eye to the brain. The damage to these axons causes ganglion cell death with resultant optic nerve atrophy and patch vision loss. Elevated intraocular pressure plays a role in axonal damage either by direct nerve compression or diminution of blood flow. Uh, normally the intraocular pressure in, uh, in unaffected eyes is uh, from 11 to 21 millimeters of mercury. Right. So, of people with intraocular pressure more than 21 millimeters of mercury, only about 1 to 2% per year develop 
glaucoma. That's about 10% over a period of 5 years. About one third of patients with glaucoma do not have intraocular pressure, which is more than 21 millimeters of mercury. And this kind of glaucoma is known as uh, normal tension glaucoma or low tension glaucoma. Right. Uh, so still on intraocular pressure, it depends. Right. One factor may be that externally measured intraocular pressure does not always reflect the true intraocular pressure right the cornea may be thinner than the average therefore this will lead to high intraocular pressure measurement or the uh, the cornea may be thicker than average which will lead to low intraocular pressure measurement inside the eye than the externally uh, measured intraocular pressure another factor may be that a vascular disorder compromises blood flow to the optic nerve and also it is likely that there are factors within the optic nerve that affect uh, susceptibility to optic nerve damage right intraocular pressure is determined by the balance of aqueous uh, humor secretion and drainage Elevated intraocular pressure is caused by inhibited or obstructed outflow, not over secretion. A combination of factors in the trabecular meshwork, for example, dysregulation of extracellular matrix, cytoskeleton abnormalities, appear to be involved. In open angle glaucoma, intraocular pressure is elevated because outflow is inadequate despite an angle that appears unobstructed. In angle closer glaucoma, the intraocular pressure is elevated when a physical distortion of the peripheral iris mechanically blocks the outflow of the aqueous humor. Right. What are the signs and symptoms of glaucoma? The symptoms and signs of uh, glaucoma varies with the type of glaucoma, but the defining characteristic is optic nerve damage, uh, and there will be evidence of abnormal optic disc and certain types of uh, visual deficits, right? Uh, we will talk about this in specific um, kinds of glaucoma in the upcoming videos. Intraocular pressure may be elevated or within the average range, right? So it's not diagnostic. It's not diagnostic. And do you know the method used for measurement of intraocular pressure? is tonometry. Tonometry. Okay, what about diagnosis? In diagnosis of glaucoma, uh, Firstly, characteristic optic nerve damage or characteristic optic nerve changes, I told you. Uh, characteristic visual field defects. You also need to exclude other causes, exclusion of other causes. And intraocular pressure, usually more than 21 millimeters of mercury, but it's not required for the diagnosis. Glaucoma should be suspected in patients with any of the following. Abnormal optic nerve on ophthalmoscopy, elevated intraocular pressure, typical visual field defects, and family history of glaucoma. All right, so uh, about screening. Screening for glaucoma can be done by primary physicians by checking visual fields with frequency doubling technology, thus FDT perimetry, and ophthalmoscopic evaluation of the optic nerve. Um, the frequency doubling technology perimetry involves the use of desktop device that can screen for visual fields abnormalities suggestive of glaucoma in two to three minutes per eye. Although 
intraocular pressure should be measured. Screening based only on intraocular pressure is low sensitivity, low specificity, and low positive predictive value. Patients more than 40 years old and those who have high risk for open angle glaucoma or angle closure glaucoma should receive a comprehensive eye examination every one to two years. Right, so how do we treat uh, glaucoma in general? The main aim is uh, decreasing intraocular pressure by using drugs, uh, laser, or incisional surgery. Right, patients with characteristic optic nerve uh, and corresponding visual field changes are treated regardless of intraocular pressure measurement. For chronic adult and juvenile glaucomas, the initial target uh, intraocular pressure measurement is at least 20 to 40 percent below the pre-treatment readings. Uh, right, so what do we use? We use uh, drugs. I will tell you about them uh, in the upcoming videos. Drugs, laser surgery, uh, incisional surgery. Prophylactic treatment, right? Prophylactic intraocular pressure lowering in patients with ocular hypertension delays the onset of glaucoma. The rate of conversion from ocular hypertension to glaucoma in untreated people is low. The decision to treat prophylactically should be individualized based on the presence of risk factors magnitude of intraocular pressure elevation and patient factors. Uh, for example, uh, uh, preferences for drugs versus surgery or drug adverse effects. Generally, treatment is recommended for patients with intraocular pressure more than 30 millimeters of mercury, even if the visual field is full and the optic nerve disc appears healthy because the likelihood of damage is significant at that level of intraocular pressure. Right, to conclude this video, uh, let me just uh, show you the key points which you need to remember. Glaucoma is common, often asymptomatic, and contributes heavily to blindness worldwide. Suspect glaucoma if patients have elevated intraocular pressure, optic nerve abnormalities on the ophthalmoscopy, or family history of glaucoma. Do not rule out glaucoma because the intraocular pressure is not high. Screen patients over 40 years of age and patients with risk factors every 1 to 2 years based mainly on results of ophthalmoscopy and frequency doubling technology, right? So this one is used to assess the visual fields. Treat by uh, decreasing the intraocular pressure and prophylactically decrease the intraocular pressure if it is more than 30 millimeters of mercury, even if glaucoma is absent.